Hello, everybody. Sure, the first round is wrapping up basically like as we record, but don't worry. Your broskies in basketball are here to get you ready for the second round and beyond. Recording live from somewhere, this is one and done. Get out the insurance cards, get out the copays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by drrodo.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Welcome to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball information. And we are powered by the world's, dare I say, universe's greatest website, and that is drrodo.com. I am your humble host. I am him. <laughs> My name is Jay Heinrich. I happen to be the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. You can find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. Follow me and I will smash that follow back button. Without further ado, the two broskies you see with me right here on the screen are two of the absolute best in the business to do it. And we are going to start, as always, with El. Capitan himself, the captain mm. of the Green Screens media ship. He does the ship. I does the train. I does. I do it. I does it. I do the train. He Eric does what you like. Eric Eric flies the money plane, I think is what we figured out or something. The, the bread truck. I don't know. You drive something. <laughs> but we're with Mike right now. The OG money uh. plane that you can find on X at MC Holland 34. Mr. Mike Holland. Mike, what it do, baby? What it do, man? Um, ah. What a what a what a what a two week uh, stretch we've been on here. We didn't we didn't come on yesterday because your your boys have just been uh, worn down. No, we got rejuvenated. We're ready to get back into it. Uh, I know Jay, you had a, a nice little day yesterday. I think Nate C. Hustle had a decent day uh, yesterday. Uh, I had an okay day yesterday. It's just when you play these you know contests with five thousand people, it's just it's so hard. Like you have to hit the stone cold nuts, but. Yeah, man, uh, I got a sweat tonight. I can't wait to watch this Grand Canyon St. Mary's second half when we get off. And that's about it, man. I'm ready to join the people and and, and get in here and, and get some bread like you guys have. This is this is the people's show, and we are here for the people, for the people, by the people. Right here on one and done. This man, look at him. Just look at him right there with the blue background, the blue shirt to match tonight. He's all he's all color coded. And he is last in the intros. But first, in your hearts, as I said earlier, the Baron of Bread of Green Screens Media, you can find in those Twitter streets, at Fantasy Nappy, is Eric, the blue, Mr. Eric Romov. What's happening? Man, I am uh, I'm trying to recover from an all-time troll job on DraftKings' behalf. Earlier today, I got a little prompt after... I basically broke even putting my entire bankroll in play for the first first day of the tournament. Got a nice little push notification from DraftKings saying, yesterday you put up your highest college basketball score ever. Can you beat it today? So I went out, I set a new PR, hit 294 points, which in any other slate is good enough to ship first place. And here it got me like 42nd right so uh that, that that was a wild way to open the tournament the pricing was wide open and then we immediately got slapped back to reality with very tight pricing on the second day of the tournament and the rest of the uh bankroll that i had out there is tied up in survivors so definitely a fun way to kick off the tournament and it is a fun way to kick off tonight's show with our guy myron kid first two days printing some money like to see it and then we've also got Chad in here. Wasn't too far off on the all dogs cover in the South. Thank God he had some heavy JMU, Colorado, and NC State outright action to offset the damage. That's really the theme, right? Like about even on DraftKings, up a little bit on prize pick, down a little bit on bets. All comes out in the wash, and we just had a good time, right? That's what it's all about. I mean, it is about, I mean, Seeing those commas, of course, but as long as we're having some fun, when it ain't fun, it ain't fun. Let's have some fun. I say that before we get on the show every night. I always tell the boys, hey, let's go out there and have some fun tonight. And make sure you're having fun with us in the live chat like Myron and Chad did. I wonder if we're going to see Sam the Sniper 
after Auburn took the hit today. My guy. <laughs> Samford should have won last night. Uh, that was a popular pick. They should have, but they did not. That's not should have, would have, could have. Kentucky lost yesterday, so there goes half of my bracket absolutely shredded. So when your only hope is Arizona, that's t- – let's talk about fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's a choice. Hey, that one and done bracket challenge, y'all. We ended up with 44 people in there filling out the brackets. We appreciate everybody that got in there. We appreciate that response to the call for action from the Green Screens Media Universe. Thanks for doing that. You know, I got down there a little bit, but don't you worry. These these next few rounds is where I'm okay. I I know I just said Kentucky was my, you know, they're out, but that's okay. Arizona's going to do some stuff, and we're going to have some more fun there. And the winner, of course, is winning that autographed Caleb Love jersey. I heard a little birdie told me that that's, that that autographed Caleb Love jersey was ready to be displayed on camera. Is that true, sir? It is all right here. Caleb Ooh. Love with the Beckett cert. And Jeez. as we sit right now, like we 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 built this up as probably one of the sharpest – bracket challenge contest out there our guy mo gags currently in uh in in first place that's our friend jeff not only is he sitting first place in this bracket he's got a 99.9 percentile bracket out here this guy is going out here chasing a record so there is a <laughs> there's, there's a lot to watch here a little bit of the tail of the tape of the one and done bracket challenge the most popular Champion championship pick was UConn at about 30%. And you've got UNC and Arizona tied at 14%. Purdue, smart Creighton, Auburn at 9%. And then you get to some 1Z, 2Z, some Houston, some Tennessees, a Kentucky floating out there. So, yeah, definitely a fun spread. And definitely the Kentucky a one's floating contest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the right. Kentucky one might be at the bottom of that might pool here. Thinking. We should hope the lifeguard scans over there and sees if there's anything going on over there with the Wildcats uh, and that $33 million buyout that Calipari has that apparently is it's chump change actually, for, for floating, Kentucky. actually floating that idea out there, paying that man $33 million to go away. Okay, <laughs> sure. Man. Pay me. It's a great gig if you can get it. Pay me. <laughs> you know, another way to pay me is, is for me to get into some of these – uh, big uh, tournaments on DraftKings coming up tomorrow. We've got the 60K tournament special, which is $20 to get in and 20K to first. We've got the 7K big five, which is, of course, $5 entry and 2K to first there. The 10K mid-range jumper, $44 entry, 2K to first and 1K to second. And then the 7.5K mini max, a dollar gets you in and first place, one a lot of contests to get you over 1K to get that comma like we're always chasing. We're chasing those commas. Plenty of opportunities on this eight-game slate for a Saturday tournament edition here on One and Done. Hop in the live chat like Myron and Chad have. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons for us. Turn on those notification bells so you don't miss a minute of our coverage. We're going to hit a quick overview here. Eric, we're going to start with you. Eight gamers, some good totals, some stinkers, but basically, you know, up and down. Yeah, feels like um, feels like a typical slate out here, right? Um, you know, we, we don't have one of these massive 14 or 16 gamers, right? Um, you know, we're, we're looking at an eight spot and no – no real crazy totals one way or the other, right? Uh, 152 is the highest. 130 is the lowest, right? The spreads are a bit tighter as we head into the second round of, of the, the March Madness tournament. So overall, like it, it feels it feels a little bit more familiar to the slates we've been playing all year long. Uh, the, the way the pricing lays out, you know, there's there's enough value on the board that you can feel okay about to where you can take the stars and scrubs line, I think that's going to be a popular approach to the build tomorrow. So what does that mean? That means that the mid tier just sitting there with a nice balanced build will be a great way to create a little bit of leverage on the field, right? Both, both of these have potential, uh, but whenever there's a lot of value, it does seem like the field breaks towards stars and scrubs. So the mid tier is just sitting there waiting for you. Mike, initial thoughts on this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad we don't have a, so it was weird. The, the first day 
we had a bunch of bunch of guys that were underpriced. Um, you know, you got guys like Caleb Love, like it's scary, but we know their ceilings, and now he's up. But that we got a bunch of guys that are up a thousand dollars. DJ Horn <laughs> is another guy. So I, that's why the score was three hundred and thirty to to win twenty twenty five thousand. And then tonight, like, yeah, Zach Eady went for like almost seventy, but there's no value on tonight's slate. It feels like. Um, all the Vermont forwards busted. Like it was just ugly. So I think we're getting a, a great mix of you can kind of play both ways. You can just get more of the do what you want type builds. Um, I know we said you can kind of do what you want, but in that first day, but also you can do what you want, but you also had studs that were grossly mispriced like Caleb Love and, and DJ Horn and even Mo Diara. Like it was, it was great. Like Anton Watson, like that you're getting guys that can score 40 fantasy points, 45 fantasy points that are six and seven K that's going to lead to, to obviously higher scores. Now we get this slate that you still have some value, but now you got to pay for guys. So it feels like the options are going to be uh, a little bit tougher to get to, which is I think going to make for overall for a very, very fun slate. We like it when you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you like. If you like Myron McNeese state in the mountain West breaking your heart. <clears throat> a lot of hearts broken already in this tournament. Chad, my guy, Northwestern, like you're all in on Northwestern to make or break your tournament financially. I love it. We're going out on the limb. We're all going out on limbs this time of year. Absolutely. One more the time there from Chad. It really mad. I let the noise of how Mc, <clears throat> McNeese was. Yeah, I mean, excuse me. That's the coach too, though. Like, I mean, there's yeah. When you got a coach like that, it's you sort of expect that anything could could be pulled off in March. It did not happen, obviously, like you're saying there, Chad. So keep the comments coming in the live chat. Make sure if you're watching in the AM, you know, with your coffee like our guy Wits likes to do, uh, make sure Wits. that you drop us you drop a comment uh, in the comment section as well. Live chat, hit us up there. First time, long time, whatever. Just say, hey, drop the fire emoji in the chat if you're on a sweat like Mike tonight. But let's get to this rundown, ladies and gents. We're going to break down every single game here, go all the way down the line, these lines and projected totals. And efficiency numbers are all from Ken Palm. If you don't know, that's what we do here. I wonder that we follow those Ken Palm numbers. So Dayton and Arizona, broskies and brosquettes. Arizona six-point favorites with a 152-point implied total here. We know that Arizona likes to get up and down. Every single game, 16th in tempo in the country. And Dayton, for a team named the Flyers, uh, they do not do as such. It's like false representation there. It's like false advertising. 336th in tempo for Dayton, who has an eight-man rotation, Mike, but really um, we know the starters are going to play – well, they all play like 30-plus in the first round. So you got to, got to think that it'll stay the same uh, in round two. Yeah. And when you see this type of pace up and we know, you know, all, all pace ups are not equal. Arizona makes you play a little bit faster. So, you know, regardless if Dayton tries to slow the game down, there's going to be more possessions than Dayton's used to playing, um, which is always an added bonus. When you kind of look at your options, you have a star that you can pay up for like Deron Holmes. He's 9,300. And look, it's it's Omar Balo, not, not not like an absolute shutdown, you know, defensive center. Um, but you know, Drawn Holmes has an inside outside game. His rates are out of control. I mean, just massive usage, massive rebounding, massive shot rate, almost a twenty percent assist rate for a big man, a seven percent shot blocking rate, shooting thirty eight percent from three. Like, I mean, there's a reason why this guy got a bag in the off season. Um, he's just an absolute great player for them. Glad to see he finally got in the tournament. Got a win here, uh, ninety three hundred. Yeah, you can get to him. Um, you can get to him. I, I'm always a little more interested, um, you know, in, in up tempo type games with guards. So for me to pay that type of price point, it feels a little yucky. Um, but absolutely, don't mind uh, going to him. Uh, I don't think he'll be very popular because there's a lot of guys cheaper than him. Um, he's one of the uh, highest salaries on the board. So uh, obviously anybody on Dayton's side that starts is going to be very much in play, especially the other guys that are here. And you look at Kobe Elvis, he sits here and uh, to try to get these guys right is an absolute nightmare. But it's because 
Holmes takes up so much usage and takes so many shots. But Kobe Elvis is a guy that will take shots, has the ball in his hands, and likes to create. Now, he hasn't really done anything in the last couple of games, so a lot of people are probably going to shy away from him. He hasn't really shot the ball. Um, normally a guy that has you know a 22% shot rate, you figured he'd get into double digits maybe a little more often. A 24% assist rate, you like that, and a 37% rate from three, uh, you like that in a pace-up spot. So uh, I feel like Kobe Elvis at 6,100 at least has to be in the player pool. Uh, if you're game stacking, uh, I like at least – you know, getting getting to two of these guards, or if not playing a guard with Theron Holmes, uh, Enoch Cheeks, he's uh, six thousand. You know, it's uh, the the usage isn't as high, the the shot rate isn't as high, but you know, he, he does a little bit more defensively. Um, he's on the floor a ton at six k. Like he's shown flashes of 35, 40 fantasy points. So, yeah, for the large field tournaments, I absolutely don't mind going to Dayton. I feel like Dayton, for the most part, is a tourney option only, even in this pace up. I, I just, it would be hard to pick like which guy is going to, uh, you know, be the four or five X guy in a cash type setting. So, uh, a little scary to kind of play it that way. But Cheeks uh, in the player pool as well in that guard rotation. Kobe Brea is 5,900. Now, for 5,900, I mean, you got a ceiling of, you know, 30 to 35 fantasy points in this spot. Uh, his usage rate isn't great. Uh, but these guys are just on the floor a lot. So when you're on the floor a lot, you're going to rack up some counting stats. Um, you know, he shoots a lot of threes. So when he, when he knocks down his threes, if he hits three, four, five threes in this spot, now he can get, you know, start getting closer to, to paying that off. He's also $300 cheaper than what he was on the last slate, thanks to an ugly Nevada game where he actually played pretty well. So don't mind me some some Kobe Bria in, in tournaments as well. Javon Bennett sitting down here at 4600 uh, I mean, if one of these guys gets into foul trouble, he's going to have a have a bigger role uh, if Bria, Cheeks, or Elvis do. So, I mean, Bennett's kind of interesting, more of a secondary option uh, for these guys um, as far as, like, a salary saver on the slate. But if you want to get cute and you're playing 4,000 teams, um, you want to add, you know, a third person to the stack or you want to just, you know, try to be completely different, like, that's an option. I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm not – I don't – I wouldn't – highly recommend doing that. I don't know if I would even recommend doing that, but he's in the player pool for sure. Just because, uh, you know, he has 20 to 25 fantasy point upside. If he's able to get a few more minutes and uh, obviously this pace up for all these guys is going to give them an extra, you know, one to one and a half X. If it does decide to go, uh, you know, North of the 152 or even get to the 152 Dayton doesn't play in too many of those games. So uh, Eric more in love with the guard rotation. I mean, Deron Holmes, maybe I'm doing it wrong. He's 9,300, but there's a lot of options below him that uh, feels like can get there. So any interest in uh, Nate Santos there who offers a pretty big savings from that forward spot? Yeah, he, he definitely offers some pretty big savings. Uh, call it like three grand just for round numbers sake. Uh, Nate Santos is the remaining guy of the starters who all get 29 plus minutes that we haven't talked about here. Mostly throughout the year, he's he's been he's been a boom bust kind of option, but unfortunately, if you're to sort of split up that pie chart, it's probably two thirds bust, right? Like his his booms are few and far between, but when he gets there, it it pays off nicely, right? He had a 38 against VCU three games ago, but then a lot of 16s and 20s kind of sprinkled around it. Um, you know the 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 benefit for him, I guess, is that you know he like everyone else is in a major pace up spot, so you know, can stand to get a little bit of a boost, um, you know, usage and shot rate are, you know, kind of around the midpoint rebounds pretty well, 22% in that regard. And he's shooting 42% from three on 120 attempts. Right. So he can see a few more go in, right. Like, you know, he's got that, that five, six X upside and tourneys always. It's just, I, I don't know if you're creating much leverage going to him. Cause I don't think that Holmes is going to be all that popular because of the price tag and you're, you're taking on, at least some decent exposure to those busts if if you're gonna click his name. I don't know though, like who's gonna be more who's gonna be more rostered, Holmes or Santos? I think they'll probably be I mean I would like say I'd probably say Holmes because he's I would leave the Holmes, star. Yeah. Yeah, because he's the star. Um, pay up. Yeah. And they, I don't think they're gonna be very owned at all. Um, which is odd right. to say with like this Arizona team that yeah, they give a boost to all these guys because Arizona, they'll turn the ball over. You know, they don't defend the three like that great. Um, we saw Long Beach State put up a lot of fantasy points in that first half, Jay. Like, they just yeah. – they'll just get out and run, and it's just bonkers with these fantasy points. Yeah, it is. It's just figuring out which guy, man. It's like, uh, like you know Holmes is going to do his thing. Just will he do enough at that price tag to win you a tournament? 
And it, it comes down to which guard, like which one is going to go for 30. Cause one of them is going to go for 30. It was kind of like, which, which long beach guy is going to go for 30 to 35. It ended up being the 7,500 Traore um, to show this was popular. Didn't get there. Uh, George off the bench would pay his heavy minutes. He got there. So, I mean, multiple guys could get there. It's just trying to pin one down is <laughs> it's pretty tough. Cause the usage after homes, it's just, <laughs> It's just kind of disgusting. I mean, it doesn't come off the floor. So, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't really tough to to pick Caleb Love uh, the other day. Uh, it was nice to take that ride uh, and watch it actually come through for once. Arizona uh, playing seven guys now that that rotation is definitely tightened up. And yeah, first round game was a blowout, and all the starters still played twenty seven minutes. Mike, so outside of Love. Um, obviously another pay up option here on this side, and they both him and Melo both went for forty. But uh, what about Love, Balo, these other Wildcats in this spot? Don't don't really have to, shouldn't have to worry about this one being a blowout. So we should they should probably all see some more meaningful minutes. But uh, what say you about the Wildcats? Man, scary, right? Like yeah. this is the trajectory of their price. <laughs> this is the tempo of the team that they're playing. <laughs> Long Beach was okay with going up and down. Dayton's, I mean, not going to be okay every possession going up and down the floor like that. I uh, would love if they did on Dayton's side because then I'm just like all my, you know, my stacks on the Dayton side are going to go off. But Caleb's now 8,700. Now we're back to, you know, basically where we were for 75% of the season. We know he's got 40 to 50 upside every single slate. doesn't matter the matchup. He just, I mean, he just takes so many shots. He's just a huge part of the offense. His rate, rates across the board are pretty solid. Um, you know, we got there the other day, but yesterday was, you know, his rebounding was there. I uh, was able to couple, pick up a couple of stocks. I'm probably going to cross them off in this spot. Um, just too many guys cheaper than him with the with, with same upside. And his uh, his downside is basically you're done for the day. Um, <laughs> like he's liable to go out there and put up a 14. So that's going to probably make him contrary. I don't see people just clicking, like opening up, and he's like the first guy you go to. Um, he's not going to project very well, uh, at least at this price tag, versus you know being in the 76 to 70, you know, eight, fl- 8 flat range. Um, Balo's price is up after the 40 spot. He's got to deal with Deron Holmes on the other side. That's a little scary. So 8,600 Bala, like it feels like we're playing season high price tags for these guys. And we're used to seeing these guys in 160, 170 point totals. This thing's down to 152. So um, but more always in play, but more secondary, I guess, for me. And then, you know, there's Larson, Boswell. I'm not really interested in them at their price tags, but especially Boswell's getting that major boost. That was kind of an outlier type game. So, um I don't know, Eric. Like for me, like this, I, I hate saying stay away from Arizona, but it feels kind of ugly, man. What are what are you doing with this roster with Love, Balo, and is there anybody else? There is someone else, um, someone who it feels like he's just been kind of chilling in the low six Ks all season, and that's Key Johnson, uh, a guy who did not see his price tag go up because he put up kind of like a mad performance, right? So. Um, you know, the, the thing that you like about him is that his his rates are super solid across the board. Like, you know, he can he can definitely pay off this price tag, you know, when he's getting his. And it, it feels like we're starting to see him get, you know, incrementally more involved here recently. But also he was uh, he was cut from the San Diego State uh, cloth. Right. He he knows a thing or two about playing and, and being productive in these slower tempo games. So maybe he is a, a little bit more immune to the the pace of his opponent and he's he's worth a flyer right but i I guess to your prior point right like if if no one's really going here with these guys that are all at near season high price tags like yeah you can you can sprinkle key johnson in but you're not you're not really separating yourself or creating any leverage on the field by doing it i'd much rather go with this with the guy whose price tag like you were saying isn't on the way up I would much rather get into this game. And I think Johnson is going to be – I think people are going to look at this Arizona total and be like, okay, 152 points. How do I get in? I can't – Caleb Love isn't going off. Isn't going to have nearly 50 again. Balo's not going to have 40. Are you really – 
we really have to consider crossing this Arizona side off, I think. But it's crazy Isha, to say, man. Isha Johnson, I, I think, is going to be popular because people are going to want to get into this game, him or Larson. But either way, uh, tread uh, carefully with Arizona. A bunch of comments here in the live chat. Let's get to them. Chad helping in saying Dayton's been a roller coaster. Yeah, absolutely. They have been a roller coaster all year long, and you don't really know what you're going to get against this Arizona team either. Uh, they're going to get up and down, so who knows? Maybe maybe Dayton gets on one, and 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 they hang with them for a little while. There might not be a more perfect Tom Izzo does it again set up like this UNC matchup, dude. You ain't lying, man. <laughs> the like, three course, point spread. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Snake size hopping in. I picked the wrong one and done bracket challenge. Put Auburn in the championship game. Hey, my guy, don't you worry. Don't you worry if it's like me last one. year picking Arizona uh, and getting you know that's okay. No, we're all good. We're all good. Thanks for hopping in there and uh, and sharing with us. And then Josh, hey, look, Josh, the white guys, they're you know we we get it. Like you know they do go crazy in conference and then maybe big stage. I don't know. We played a couple yesterday that that scored quite <laughs> a few points. So um, donkey mania. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, that was amazing to watch. Like, he just he was just coming around screens like Steph Curry and just, like, off balance, just throw it up there. And what a day that was for him. And we'll wasn't it, about wasn't it. it, like, three dribbles that he took, too, on these 20 shots or something yeah. like that? Yeah, no, no two-point attempts, right? Just everything from yeah. beyond the arc there. Um, we'll talk about him here shortly. Um he thinks it's going to be an up-tempo game, game, saying uh, Dayton's defense Dayton's has been awful. awful. So, uh, I mean, you... so here's the thing. Like, look, uh, Dayton VCU, 91-86 in overtime. Uh, a month before that, 49-47. Uh, to 47. So, I, it can go one or two ways. Like, I, I mean, they play, in some, they play in some higher totals, and they play in some totals that are just – Obviously, I mean, they want to play. 60, they would love to play. 65-63. Like They'd love to some... play 52 to 50. Like, they would love to keep this game in the 50s, obviously. I mean, we just saw it. Nevada, 63 60, 65 yeah. 57 against Duquesne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Arizona loves to push the pace. So, um, I, that's why the Dayton guys, it's just like, you yeah, feel like, man, if they're going to get side. 10 extra possessions, <laughs> hey, let's go. Right. Good stuff for the first game there. Make sure if you're hanging out with us and you haven't already, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Do your part in the Green Screens Media Universe and do that for your broskies in basketball. There's three of us on stage, screen, stage and the screen, whatever you want to call it. But don't forget our, about our guy at The Real Napier, Napsy Hustle behind the scenes, shooting videos for the socials, doing it all. Make sure you show him some love at The Real Napier as well, at Dr. William Cannon, at Fantasy Nav, at MC Holland 34 at one and done CBB, all spelled out. That is the show's Twitter page. And then at Get Green Screens over there on Twitter as well. And then at Get Green Screens on TikTok too. We're doing it all. We're doing it everywhere. Make sure you get a little piece of Green Screens Media wherever you go. Wherever I, I you love the... Uh... Love the interaction here from Josh, man. Saying he's going by Ken Palm, 70th in defensive efficiency. So you can go by that, but you also have to go by their by their offensive length of possession as well as their defensive length of possession. They're 300th. They take 18 seconds before they shoot the ball. And guess what? They're 351st um, in, their, in defensive possession. So, like, it's kind of one of those things. The shot clock is just going down when another, you know, they or the opponent is taking a shot. So, um, yeah, man, that's a fair point, though. I mean, it's not like it's a, a world beater of a defense, but it's also yeah, just not a team that means. just grinds you out. So, yeah, absolutely, man. Good stuff, Josh. Thanks that's, for hopping in that live check. Keep it rolling. Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Sorry. That's 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 how these teams pull upsets, right? Like, if if Arizona is a better team on a per possession basis, Dayton's plan is very much so limit the number of possessions, right? right? So, like, they that that side gets the boost with the with the pace up spot, but. Well, that's Dayton's that's Dayton's deal because they're tenth they're tenth in effective field goal percentage, so they play slow, yeah. they limit possessions, they take forever, and they're very efficient offensively. So that just I mean, so watch bad. out, Jay. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, this just this just <laughs> something some, something smells rotten in Denmark or wherever that game's being played. Either way, the Denmark region. The Denmark region, exactly. <laughs> 
That's all right. Let's keep it rolling, though. Let's keep that live chat going. Thanks a lot, Josh. We love the interactions. Make sure everybody hit those like and subscribe buttons. We got up to like 850 at the end of last show, and then magically went back down to like 848. Let's just push those buttons and leave it how it is. Y'all know what to do. You know what it is. You, hey, we do know that you could be anywhere else in the world right now, and you probably are. You're probably all over the place. You got I got two games on in my living room not right now. I've got James Madison up by eight right there. What do we got here? We got AJ Store at the line. Uh, Wisconsin down eight against James Madison. It's all cooking over here. We got it going on. We know what you're doing. We know March Madness is on, but we appreciate y'all hanging out with us as well. Just like Gentry hopping in on Twitter over there, Carolina going to win. Well, we shall see. We're going to get to North Carolina here very, very shortly. But first, Kansas and Gonzaga. Another 152-point implied total here. A couple of teams that like to get up and down, 78th and 84th, respectively, in tempo. The Zags, Mike, playing seven guys. Um, and, you know, we the foul, we, we talk about this stuff, obviously not taking into consideration. Oh, well, there's foul trouble. But if somebody <laughs> – if nobody's in foul trouble, every one of these starters is going to play 30-plus for the Zags. Yeah, absolutely. And Kansas uh, not playing a lot of defense here. Um, got hammered in, in Big 12 play, uh, one of their lowest finishes in, in quite some time uh, as far as defensive efficiency. And uh, they get, they got hammered in Big 12 play by the three ball and also by Sanford. <laughs> Sanford did a lot of threes in that game, especially in the second half. They also lost their best wing defender, Kevin McCullough, also one of their better offensive players, so that kind of slows them down there. Uh, but you know, for, for Gonzaga, man, like it's just kind of uh, almost spinning the wheel, right? Like, I mean, Ryan Nemhart sitting here at 8,200, that price tag is okay. I mean, both teams top 100 tempo. So like, I, I feel okay clicking that button. He's probably not going to be rostered because every other guy on this team is <laughs> less than him. Um, but man, he's got a ceiling for 35 to 50 in this spot. So uh, you saw what Ryland, uh, Ryland Jones was able to do uh, and these little guards um, from Sanford. So don't mind them hard. I just, I, I kind of like, I kind of like Graham EK in this spot. He's 8K, just massive usage, massive rebound rate. Price is down 200 bucks. to getting a little haircut there. Uh, you know, could get into foul trouble though uh, easily, which means he's a contrarian option. I think it was 7% the other day. Uh, or yesterday. So if I'm going to get him for five to seven percent again, um, I don't mind it. Watson sitting here at 7,700 uh, just does everything was phenomenal. We had him uh, in a bunch of lineups. 7,200 went off for 46. Uh, man, the rates are just awesome across the board. You know they play this. Uh, they play this three big lineup that we always talk about. Um, now inserting uh, you know Ben Gregg into the starting lineup. So they're basically playing like three powerful, you know, two power forwards and a center. So it's just an interesting look and something that I don't think we really – we should have thought about that a little bit more taking on McNeese. And we kind of mentioned that McNeese has never seen anything like this. So, um, you know, Ben Gred's sitting there at 6,500. He feels the least comfortable. But he does have ceiling. I mean, he's had ceiling games where he's put up 35, 40 fantasy points. So uh, you definitely don't mind it. Uh, kind of spin the wheel. feels like one of these guys is going to go off. The price tag's a little more expensive than, you know um, – we probably want to go to. I would say Nimhart, uh, Watson always. I, I do have just because he's gonna be a little contrarian. I I do like EK a little bit, but uh, uh, Nolan Hickman, man. Um, oh man, just complete burnt toast the other day. Eric, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, Hickman. Uh, Hickman kind of left us hanging um, here here in 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 recent memory, right? Um, you know, we, we said that he would be, a, a great play against McNeese and it, it really fell through to your, to your prior point about this kind of three forward, uh, style that the Zags like to, like to trot out there. Uh, even, even with these down performances, like Hickman is, is always in play in GPPs because he can reach back and get you 30, 40 fantasy points pretty much any time out he's out there. Right. So like, you know, this, this might be one of those points where, you know, people are going to look at these, you know, these couple of duds that he's put out here recently and not feel so great about clicking the name, right? He's getting a little bit of a reduction in his price tag to down 300 bucks. And these are the types of opportunities that we typically like to pounce on. So, uh, you know, sometimes you got to buy the dip. And I, I think I think Hickman is a great candidate for that. 
Man, Nemard was the only player that I played the other day in that in that awesome lineup that didn't have the flames. And uh, even if he would have, even if he would have scored like twenty more fantasy points, I still would have <laughs> not maybe been top one hundred. That's how many fantasy like seven x. <laughs> yeah, I needed him to go like, yeah, literally like I, he could have gone like eight x, and I still <laughs> wouldn't have cracked top twenty. That's how crazy. crazy that that's how crazy that slate was the other night, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be obviously, um, like you were saying, we, we see the defensive efficiency numbers there for Kansas 13th, but they're not, it doesn't feel like that's indicative of the effort on the defensive end of the floor that we're seeing. And speaking of Kansas, Gentry in the chat asking if I'm related to Kirk Heinrich, Jayhawk legend Kirk Heinrich. No. I am not, but I did used to use that quite a bit. Uh, when people would ask, I would always just roll with it and say he was my cousin. That's um, a good bit. And, it, and then they would see me shoot, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, y'all probably are related because you got a shot. And I'm like, yeah, I, I thank you. I mean, big facts. If, you, if you've been following us for a long time, we were out at the West Regional in Vegas last year, and there was a, there was a free throw competition in the middle of the, like the T-Mobile Arena, T-Mobile Center parking lot in Vegas outside, and I'm, I'm – I bet you can guess who won that competition. If you didn't know, I bet you could guess me. Me, I did. I smoked these fools by a mile. I'm no, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure fools. you drained more than Mike and I combined. Combined, that just is true. completely pulled our pants down. Yeah. Embarrassed us out there. Yeah. Well, it's you know, it's I got a shot. What can I say? You know, Kirk is not running the kid, family, but I got the shot like him for show. Josh, and speaking of shooters, Josh and Gonzaga doesn't have a ton of shooters. They play inside out. You think Kansas wins this one? Very well, could. Let's get to Kansas right now, Eric. We're gonna come right back to you here. Only six guys playing. Obviously, McCullers out with that injury uh, takes a, a big part of what they do out of their rotation, and it really just shrinks down at this time of year uh, to six guys. So, uh, got some opportunities here to to get into this side of the ball. But uh, who are you focusing on uh, with the Jayhawks, Eric? Yeah, so we uh, we spent a good amount of time trying to figure out who was going to answer the call with McCullough out in that first game, and we posed that it was Johnny Furphy, and hey, it was Johnny Furphy. Uh, went out there and put up a 35-spot damn near. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of things at play, right? Like, it, it, in general, I don't think this is the best spot for, for Dickinson, right? Like, yes, he completely exploded that last time out, but, uh, you know, this is a very... A uh, very, very big team and a very big focused uh, concept that uh, that they that the Zags trot out there. So, you know, when when Gonzaga they're out there, they're they're playing fast. They're going to put Hunter in, you know, in, in pick and roll, and you know he's going to have to deal with Graham Ek all night. So, you know, for me, I I kind of like how this one sets up for the guards on the Kansas side, um, and specifically, you know, Furphy has been phenomenal when Dickinson is in and McCullough is out, right? Multiple. 30 plus fantasy efforts in those spots. So yeah, Johnny Furphy at 6.6 K. I mean, he's, he's in the mix for cash. He can obviously get you the upside you need for tournaments. He, he probably will be a little bit popular just because he's coming off of one of those ceiling performances. But I, I mean, I think you feel pretty good plugging him in and finding leverage and ways to get different elsewhere. Mike, uh, looking up and down the Jayhawks mm -hmm. roster here. Plenty of forwards to choose from. A few more guards that we can maybe sprinkle in. How how are you tacking the uh, the Kansas side? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I like Furphy a lot. I just I'm not gonna pay ninety six hundred for Hunter Dickinson. <laughs> I mean, we saw the sixty five, but that was just complete matchup related. Um, not for me. And I, I can't I can't pay seventy three hundred for KJ Adams, even though the last couple of games he's played well. But he's I mean. That's like ceiling type stuff. Like Furphy can get up to yeah. forty. Um, Dewan Harris is just doesn't shoot the ball. <laughs> so like he's just gonna sit here at this price forever. Um, the pace is there, kind of like the Kentucky game earlier this year. But man, I'll, I'll just pat Nick Timberlake. Like that is that is a kind of a disaster until he hit a couple of threes down the stretch and then had that you know that phantom foul call and, and a random steal. Like he was uh, he was trending toward like that twenty piece again. Yeah. So fifty six hundred, man. Like I'd rather play, you know, forty six hundred for for Nick Timberlake. So yeah, I don't know, man. I'm kind of with you. I just I'm looking at Furphy and 
I am, I play a lot of lineups. So I, I maybe I'll sprinkle in a guy here or there, but yeah, I don't. I think that's it, man. I think we can move on from this one. So between Kansas and Arizona, the only player between Kansas and Arizona that's worth playing is Furphy. <laughs> That's I, mean, I mean, that's not worth. Priority. I mean, the, well, yeah, I mean, priority type plays. They're all secondary yeah. plays, I guess. Is I got yeah. you. Yeah, we got to consider them in this total. They're not cross offs, sure. but they're not primary plays. Got it. Very good. All right, excellent stuff there. Uh, yeah, Furfy Mania, ride the wave, y'all. I think he's going to be super popular. Uh, Dickinson, no, I'm not chasing that. Sorry, I'm not sorry though. I'm not. I say I'm sorry. I'm not even sorry. I'm not even going to apologize. You should apologize if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet. I'm just kidding. You don't have to. You don't have to apologize. But maybe you know. Maybe hit the button anyway. Just go over there and just click it like that's a pen cap or something. That's all it takes. Hit that subscribe button. Show us some love. We appreciate you. Do your part in the Green Screens Media Universe. Hit those buttons. Moving on now to the uh, previously mentioned by Gentry, North Carolina Tar Heels. Taking on the old Michigan. Taking on Sparty. It's Izzo. January, February, Izzo. Things that you'd love to see. This is the type of matchup that we want to see in March. Big time pace up for Michigan State, who gets, uh, you know, the four guys playing big minutes, Mike, for, for the Spartans. And Izzo's really just pared it down to <laughs> what it takes to win at this point. And that's it. Nothing, no bulls. No BS, nothing else. Yeah. This is the these are the guys, and we're either going to beat you with these six or seven guys, or or you know, every once in a while, you know, get get a guy in there for five or six minutes total. But but really, like we know the four main guys that are playing these big minutes for the Spartans. Yeah, and Josh saying this line is really low. UNC's going down. Yeah, <laughs> would not be surprised to see this happen. Um, I mean, this is a preseason top five team. Uh, has shown flashes throughout the season, but has also looked like complete crap. So, um, yeah, I mean, Tyson Walker, 7,800 is a cash play. I mean, you love the, the up-tempo nature that they're going to be put in. Um, both teams top 10 in the country in defensive efficiency, though, which is why you see this total here. Um, so I don't mind Tyson Walker. It feels like you can kind of pencil him in for 28 to 32 fantasy points in this one. I, I wouldn't play him in, in tournaments. I'd much rather reserve that for someone like Malik Hall, who is just on this, like, ridiculous roller coaster right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've played him before, and he, you know, and it's like, oh, it's so good when he's like just on his game. He'll go for 40, and he's 6,600, and he's playing 30 to 35 minutes. You just got to make some shots, man. He's starting off some of these games just 0 for 3, 0 for 5. Like, it's just been annoying recently, and that's why you see the volatility 16 last game, 30, the game before that, 10, 19, and then a 44. And you just go through his game log, and it's been like that all season long. Uh, Jaden Aikens sitting there at 5,900. We haven't played much of him. I uh, had more of a stealing game uh, in that first round matchup against Mississippi State. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm just probably staying away uh, from Aikens here at 5,900. It, it just it feels like that's like the absolute max <laughs> for him. And at 5,900, if he was 500, you know, $500 cheaper, I, I would take more of a look at him. But uh, AJ Hogard, uh, Eric, like kind of interesting. I don't know. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, interesting is a good way to put it, right? Uh, obviously, he had that pretty magical tournament run last year, right? I, I think, you know, you, you mentioned this to a certain extent with Malik Hall. You know, Hogart feels like he's he's potentially on the, the tournament radar, right? Like, he's a guy that's going to have the ball in his hands for, you know, the the entire game, essentially. They are in that that pace-up spot, right? They're, they're playing against the 42nd paced team in the UNC side, so... Yeah, I mean, look, if, if this game gets up and down, like, you know, he'll he'll certainly be a contrarian tournament type of option. Didn't exactly set the world on fire against Mississippi State, right? But that was much more of a grindhouse type of game style. I think this one has, you know, it lends itself to a little bit more up and down nature. Um, the other name that I think we can call out here is Trey Holloman, uh, 4.2K. I mean, he's, you know, he, he's getting the price decrease, right? He's down 400 bucks, so you'll take that savings wherever you can get it, you know, this is a guy that he's getting good run off the bench, right? Like he's hit, you know, uh, you know 20 minutes, you know, uh, multiple times. He's hit 20 fantasy points multiple times, which you'll obviously take at that price tag. And more than anything, like if, if any of these starting guards who just get so much run get into any foul trouble, there's a, there's a pretty clear path for, for Holloman to, to really step up and, you know, get 
well past that 5X multiple. Going to be looking for some cheap options here. Holloman's got to be on the radar for sure. North Carolina now, eight-man rotation in these tight games, especially as the season has wound down. Gentry in the in the live chat saying if if Cormac Ryan hits three threes this game is over yeah well it'll also just about get him to where he was the last three games too so I I'm really iffy to to jump all over him but yeah I mean he shot 156 threes Mike this this North Carolina side obviously Baycott's been over 43 of the la- or in three straight games <laughs> actually yeah. uh, and then Ingram has been one of the more frustrating players to to roster so what about Baycott, Ingram, Ryan, anybody else on the Tar Heels? No, we're back to the early part of the year. Um, I don't – I'm not going to pay 8500 for Baycott in this spot. Uh, the price is just – I mean, it was 6800 like, what, two weeks ago? And then, obviously, it's rattled off some monster games. I threw out the last game because that was just – I mean, they don't – they didn't – you know, Wagner didn't have any guys that could even remotely stop him. So he just like he would just like walk over and like put his yeah, over just their head literally and grab it and then roll it in and then walk, jog <laughs> down the court. Like, exactly, and and Michigan State's gonna have about twenty to twenty five fouls at their disposal because they rotate their center position with like five dudes. <laughs> Feels like five dudes, more like four guys. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, eighty five hundred doesn't feel great. He's not going to be owned. He was three percent the other uh, the other day. <laughs> now he's in a, a, pr- a pricing, a significant price increase again. Now uh, everyone probably will run to Harrison Ingram because now his price has fallen, and we know he has forty fantasy point upside. He hasn't done anything recently, but I mean, with his rebounding ability, uh, his three point shooting. Like just his versatility of his game. I'm gonna take shots in tournaments on Harrison Ingram. I can't do it in cash. Uh just too volatile right now for that. So really Ingram's probably the primary guy on my radar. Cormac Ryan, I'm I'm not playing at 6K. Like he needs to be 5400, 5200 for me to consider him. And then there's uh there's RJ Davis there, Eric, who kind of like Harrison Ingram, like these guys have taken a backseat to to Baycott season, at least as far as like price and ceiling for Davis. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, Davis is probably going to be a little bit overlooked here, right? Like, um, you know, sitting up there at at 8.3K and fortunately, like, doesn't have a a whole lot of history of of paying off that price tag in in tournaments over these last couple of weeks, right? So, like, yes, it's a a tough matchup, right? But in in tournaments, you know, you got to consider him because, I mean, he's he's on the short list of guys that can reach back and get you 50-plus on any given slate, so. If you're if you're if you match the end, you know, grab grab a few shares, sprinkle them in, you know, uh, more of a secondary piece, uh, even tertiary. But I, I don't think you can you can cross off his name on at any slate, especially one where he's probably not going to be rostered all that often. If you had to if you had to put up your whole bankroll and pick five guys on this whole on this slate, and one of them would have to get you fifty fantasy points. For your whole bankroll, I think R.J. Davis would have to be in consideration list. for that. Like he'd have to be on that list. So uh, yeah. with the guys with the ceiling that he has. So obviously it's tough, eighty three hundred. Um, but tournaments, he's got to be in play for sure. I don't know, Gentry. You think you think Cormac Ryan's going to get to three threes? Like that's. I'm not saying you're wrong necessarily. That like if he gets if Cormac Ryan gets going, this it could be bad. It would be really bad for Michigan State, but yeah, you know, this is totally terrifying. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. This game so, goes yeah, under. Like it's all these guys. All these guys are dead. <laughs> yeah, got to sprinkle them in though, because if it doesn't, somebody's going off. So, excellent stuff, Gentry and Josh and everybody else hopping in there. Who else was in there earlier? Snake Eyes, Chad, Myron in there, of course. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already if you thought that last total made your skin crawl mike how about 130 wisconsin wisconsin got wisconsin on over here i got these w's wisconsin actually down by 11 right now with like two and a half minutes left no 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 not wisconsin we're talking about washington state and iowa state my final four pick out of that region iowa state 130 point total here it's a pace up for washington state but then again basically everything is uh <laughs> but the the point here is that iowa state plays um you know 
a little bit of defense. Right. Washington State does too, and that's why this total is so low. Let's start with Washington State, Mike, playing eight guys. Yeah, I don't have I don't have a lot of interest because what 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 happens when you play guys against Houston and, <laughs> and Iowa State? It uh it doesn't get it doesn't get very pretty. So Isaac Jones, uh, Miles Rice, like I mean, at this price tag, I'm interested, but not the opponent. So I'm probably I'm probably going away from both of those guys. Feels weird to say. The one piece that I'm interested in here is uh, is Isaiah Watts. Um, he's 4400. He flashed in the Pac-12 tournament. Um, he went for 17 fantasy points. He made a critical uh, made a critical play, a couple, a couple of plays down the stretch against Drake. He had the key steal when uh, Debris was driving down the lane with 45 seconds. Uh, he has no fear. Um, I don't even think he knows that he's in uh, the NCAA tournament and just gambles. Um, I mean, he flashed 31 and 29 over the last five games at 4400. Like I don't need 31 and 29. Like I, I would gladly accept the 22 to 24. The thing is, we don't know how secure the minutes are going to be with him. I mean, he hasn't topped 28 minutes since that USC game, and that was, you know, a, more of a going to be more of an up and down game than this thing is going to be. So, I don't know, just a little bit of interest in Isaiah Watts, but not much else, Eric. Like Jalen Wells, man, he he paid us off in uh, on a lot of lineups, man. But good lord, like I just can you pay 6200 I don't know that I can, man. Are you going to do it? Yeah, I mean, it, we, we have fond memories because he, he paid us off in that in that Drake game, right? But this is this is not that, right? Like, you get this defense, you get this total, uh, a, a totally shot-dependent guy, right? Like, I'm, I'm nervous, you know. If, if you want to cobble together an argument for him, like he, he plays a ton of minutes, right? 39 minutes in, in, in back-to-back games. He's, you know, routinely in the high 30s. You know, it's just in such a tough spot for a guy that basically just he's got to get buckets to get there. Like if, if he just did, you know, anything <laughs> more on the secondary <laughs> stat side, like you would, you would feel okay about 6.2 K. Um I mean, a, a lot of his shots are from three, right? 151 three-point attempts. You know, Iowa State is is allowing a, a pretty decent three-point percentage, a, a pretty heavy share of points coming from the three ball as well. So there's there's a path for him. But, like, like why are you making a case to, like, try to get into this game? You know what I mean? Like, there, there are better spots. There are better ways to spend 6.2K. There are better ways, but... Last game, Wells put up 37, sorry, 36, just about 36 fantasy points, and he only shot four threes. The games before that, three-point attempts, eight, seven, ten, seven. There's a two in there, but then there's eight and ten. So six out of the last yes. eight, he's getting over seven three-point attempts. He's getting them up, right? And if you're playing 39 minutes a game and you're shooting that many threes and you're shooting them at a 43% clip, I think he's got to be into consideration here. I know the total. I know it stinks. Like, it smells horrible. Like, ooh, that smell. Can't you smell that smell? <laughs> yeah, that smell that you smell is the Washington State and Iowa State total. But Jalen Wells is one player that if he gets hot at 6,200, is going to be one of be like, ah, yeah. He paid us off once. No, he paid us off twice. I think you got to consider Wells. A little bit. What about that defensive juggernaut, Iowa State? Mike, they score some fantasy points, too, on that side of the ball, on that side of the court, I should say. But really, I mean, is there is there a ton to talk about here with the Cyclones from that perspective? Just a couple of guys, really, I guess. Nah, yeah, we did this the other day, too, right? It's like pick, pick, well, pick one of the two star guards. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tom and Lipsy, 7,500. Uh, he outscored Gilbert by five fantasy points. <laughs> you know, their prices are up, right? So getting into 35, it's okay. It's it's good. Uh, I would say on this tournament, I mean, in this slate, it, 35 is going to be a little bit better than guys going seven and eight X. Um, you know, you'll take your five X's on this slate. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, just massive defensive rates. Uh, shoots, the, uh, shoots the three ball very well for almost 40%, 30% assist rate, high usage. Uh, you can play Tom and Lipsy. I Feels a little cashy to me. Um, you play in cash or attorneys, either one of these guys. So uh, thoughts on Gilbert, uh, Eric? Uh, yeah, I guess my initial thought is if you were paying attention to Mike as he ran down all of Tom and Lipsy's rates, basically copy and paste that for, for Kishon Gilbert, right? 
um, that these these guys profile almost identically, right? Um, you know, we're we're looking at a uh, hundred dollars savings, and I like to I like to needle at Mike, so I'll uh, I'll say Gilbert's the play here, right? Let's but go. Ultimately, with with the Cyclones, right? Like one of these two guys is going to land somewhere between thirty and forty fantasy points. Um, you know, if if you feel so inclined to get him in, balance your exposures across the two of them. You know, maybe maybe Gilbert won't be quite as popular because he put up thirty instead of thirty five last time out. But ultimately, I don't think I don't think either of these guys are going to be you know a huge priority in terms of ownership. So you can you can mix and match them and and you know wait for one of the two of them to get you near forty. Yeah, and both of them could get into the forties. And if you're if Seven you're really 40, just gonna yeah. flip the, if you're just gonna flip the coin like last last time out, I like Lipsy better, and he happened to do a little bit five fantasy points better, right? Flip a coin and get them in. Yeah, these totals stink, but one of them is going to go off. Who knows, though, right? Like, all the rates are the same, like you said. It's all the same, like basically identical. So flip a coin and get one in. Thanks for hanging out with us, Gentry. You're still rolling. Oh, you're answering no. You don't think Cormac Ryan will get three threes. They will lean on RJ as the matchups get tougher. I like that analysis. We That's appreciate that. And we also appreciate the love. <laughs> Right there. My guy. It's saying great content, helping you get the lineups in. That's why we're here. It's all about. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing it. Thanks for hanging out with us over there on Twitter. Make sure if you haven't already, do us a favor and get over to YouTube. Hit those like and subscribe buttons to your part in the green screens at Media Universe. As we move on now, North Carolina State versus – let me clean off my – what does this say? Oakland. Oh, my gosh. It happened. That's right. It's a funny That's way right. to spell Kentucky. It sure is a funny way to spell Kentucky. Oakland, uh, and that is not of the, of California fame. That is no, no. Of, they're, they're up there in Michigan, actually, is this Oakland. Um, hey, guys, checking in for those Grizzlies. Are they the Golden Grizzlies, right? The Golden Grizzlies, is it, I believe? <laughs> Only one kind of grizzly, golden. Uh, only one kind. He's golden. What's golden is that we know basically five guys are playing all the minutes for Oakland. Mike, that's golden. Yeah, this is the. Uh, I mean, this is the uh, the game that I really want to watch. Um, I mean, Oakland obviously coming off of the win against Kentucky, and then North Carolina State is just on this heater, uh, just absolutely dismantled Texas Tech. Uh, man, like obviously Dr has changed a lot of things with his rebounding and shot blocking. Um, but man, like we were targeting North Carolina state for a while. Uh, <laughs> and so I, you know, I feel like this heater that they're on Oakland's on, like some of these guys are playable. Trey Townsend, uh, I've just been so awesome, right? 46, 64, 36, 32, 28. Just rates across the board are great. Ah, that price tag is uh, certainly annoying. Um, but now, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, uh, if you can find a way to get to him, I don't think he's a primary option at that price tag, uh, especially because you look at all the other price tags. You're like, man, like these guys have upside too. But there's Golkey. I mean, he's 7K now. The, the the craziness with him and the T-shirts and like all this stuff, it's uh, it's pretty wild. Just you know, coming off the 39. But we were talking about this pre-show. Like at 7K, you know, I hate shot dependent guys. He literally doesn't do anything else. I mean, I took 23. So he 10 of them. And he only scored 39 fantasy points. I mean, <laughs> that just kind of tells yeah, you. Yeah, like one board and like maybe yeah. a steal and then one assist, yeah, like that's one, it. one and a bunch of so threes. Which... I'm not that interested in that, like, to be honest with you. I'm more interested in saving some salary. Like, DK Cole's been great two of the last three games. I mean, 30 plus, I mean, 6,200, so the price is up, which is, yeah, that's the story. When, you, when you're obviously going through the tournament, your prices are low and you're winning, your prices are going to go up. So, you know, Cole's rates, 21% shot rate, 21% combined rebounding rate, 18% assist rate, 2% steal rate. She's 37% from three on the year. Um, you know, I, I feel like people are going to start to hop off now that these price increases uh, are here. So at 6,200, like, I feel like he's an okay play, just more for tournaments, I would say. Uh, he does have a very low floor, especially since Rocket Watts is back. I don't really have any interest in Chris Conway, um, 5,700. He's just kind of there. Uh, Rocket Watts, though, uh, you know, we remember him from <laughs> Michigan State. He was a starter for Michigan State like four years ago. Um, he's 3,700 um, back from injury, massive usage rate, massive, like all he, like, he just loves to shoot, um, which is why he's not at Michigan State anymore. 
uh, but an 18% assist rate, and he'll chip in a steal or two at 3,700. Like he was taking shots down the down the stretch here. Uh, he clo- you know, closing out the game. He's going to be a very big piece of what they're trying to do. You know, Golki and these guys like they they have to you know run around screens and do all that. Well, Rocket Watts can get to the basket and kind of create his own shot. So uh, definitely like him as a as a value type play. Um, although I think he'll be pretty popular coming off the 16 spot that he laced up. So. Uh, I don't know, man. I just feel like I'm either going to go all the way up or all the way down. And I'm, I'm just going to, if somebody beats me with a goal key on 10 threes again, like, I mean, that's not even 10 threes is barely over 4X at this point. So I'm not, I'm not that concerned with embrace it. it. I guess Mike. it's closer to embrace 5X. It. So. Embrace yeah, it's kind of madness. We watched, him <laughs> on, we watched him on the projector. Yeah. Just hit shot after shot after shot after shot the other day. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be popular. Eric, do you, yeah. I mean, I, do you, you think he's in? I think Goldie's gonna be popular, Eric, and then and then anybody else for you on this Oakland side. A hundred percent, he's gonna be popular, right? Yeah. Like he is, he is the storyline of the early part of the March Madness tournament. Uh, we were we we thought we were being wise asses last time we were on air saying he was gonna shoot twenty five threes. He damn near got there. Yeah, he almost hit um, that number. But Mike's Mike's point is is spot on, right? Like. You know, he he had to hit 10 threes to pay off his number last time. You know, if, I mean, if he just if he trickles down a little bit, right? He goes down to seven threes at 7K. Like, you're not you're not feeling all that good, right? So um, I, I I will certainly be underweight to the field on Golki. The only player that we haven't talked about here, it, you know, it, it's kind of case in point for Blake Lampman, right? He's sitting here, you know, at 6.3K. You know, he's he's kind of the forgotten man from the other night. Everyone is going to go up, you know, 700 bucks for Golki, or they'll go down to Cole and save 100 bucks, go all the way down to Rocket Watts and save a ton of money. And they're sitting Blake Lantman. Mike forgot about this guy, and Lantman won him a GPP like a week ago, right? So, I mean, that that that's all you really need to to say. How soon in terms we of, forget? Yeah, like this this guy hooked you up. You're not even talking about him on the show. So <laughs> I I doubt I doubt anyone's gonna click the click the button if you know he didn't go around and win them a comma of about a week ago. So the rates are solid across the board. Under the radar attorney guy, right? He can definitely get you to 35 plus, and that's that's exactly what you're looking for in the low six Ks. Yep, he can get you there for sure. As James Madison just wraps it up, 11 point victory over. The old Badgers of Wisconsin. Go. We're going to put them in a mansion out there in Wisconsin. No, no. Shout out to James Madison. That's another 12 5. What do you know? Every year. What do you know? It's like, why does everybody pick all these 12 5 upsets? Because it's every year it happens. Like, that's why it's every freaking year. That's why it's. Who knows? It's the magic of March. It's here. You know what else is here? North Carolina State. Let's look at these prices, Eric, and uh, try not to salivate at some of these uh, lines here. Diara and Horn, both just over 7K. Those are two of the guys that are playing over 40, uh, excuse me, over 40 minutes. Man, that would be nice. This game going overtime. Is there something that I don't, that I know that I'm not sharing with y'all? Four starters playing 30 minutes. For North Carolina State, Diara and Horn, two of those guys. Eric, what do you think about them? Yeah, look, um, for however disappointing an outcome that was for Kentucky, um, they did they did manage to rack up a fair amount of points, right? So Oakland is a uh, is a defense that you know we we can we can look to exploit, and in particular in this matchup, like the the prices on these on these key guys for NC State are just so appealing, right? Like you. You mentioned earlier how how Modiar has really changed the complexion of this team. He's sitting near it at seven point two k. Like you know, it it feels like over these last couple of weeks, you know, NC State is, has just has just unleashed this cat, and and he's out here taking full advantage of his opportunity. He's you know he's a big reason why they made the tournament. You know why they're still in the dance now. Why they have a chance to advance to the Sweet Sixteen. You know he he doesn't score a ton. But his his rebounding and his stock ability are insane. Forty one percent rebound rate, five percent block rate for a guy that is you know out on the floor a ton. You know he's he's got forty plus in back to back games. He's got a fifty in the mix too, right? Like you know seven point two k. Yes, it's an increase, but clearly it's it's not high enough, right? This guy can totally do it. Well, what are we Love missing him. here? 
What are we missing here? Why is he only 7,200? What are we missing here? 40 Sample and side? four out of the last five. Yeah, but I mean, it, like you were saying, though, we finally, we finally feel like they took the, the, uh, the block, not the, what is it called? Like the, if you're in the race car and you've got the, you're taking off the, the governor, the governor on this guy. And you feel like it's got to be real, right? Like, I know we saw the 28 a couple of games, a few games ago, but like, are we not confident that DR can get there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think the I price is because DK's yeah. algorithm is yeah, it's, messed up. It's, it's robots <laughs> setting the price, right? They're, yeah. they're not watching the games. So what's that? What's the ownership on DR? 40%? No, nah, I don't. Uh, just because no, of the, eight game yeah, probably like 20 I'm, to 25. I'm going to say like 22 is where is, is the number that jumped out to me. He'll, he'll, be, was, he'll be one of the more popular options, but not quite 40. I, I, was, hoping, I was hoping to shoot high, and then I was wanting to draw that. To, I wanted it to be a little bit closer at what I thought was maybe about thirty percent, but y'all are saying in the twenties, twenty five. I think it's gonna be super popular. What about Horn? Just a hundred dollar haircut there, Eric. Yeah, Horn, a uh, hundred dollars savings from Diara, but like Mike mentioned earlier, one of those guys that's up uh, about a grand from the yeah. last time he was out a few days ago. Um, look, he's good, he's the engine to this offense, right? Like, not not afraid at all to to go back to the well here. 24% usage rate, 28% shot rate, shooting 41% on nearly 253 point attempts. And this this pairing in particular, Diara and Horn, they uh they helped boost our guy Nate C Hustle's lineup on that that Thursday slate. So feel pretty good about clicking both of those names to try to replicate that magic. But Mike, you know, these these might be the marquee names, but those in the know know that. Now, we like to talk about the dancing bear a little bit. What do we need to know about DJ Burns and the rest of this Wolfpack side? Uh, that I'm not going to play DJ Burns. So, oh, I'm just, I'm not that interested in him. But I know his rates are fantastic. Skates. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. But I mean, he usually lives in the high points for that. He lives in the high 20s, yeah. and I just, okay. I'd much rather save $2,200 and take Ben Middlebrooks, who's going to play 20 to 25 minutes. And that's fair. I don't know why. Like, well, talk about the algorithm. I don't. I don't know why he's forty two hundred. That doesn't make any sense. He's gonna shoot the ball a ton, but he's. He, it's just wild, man. He like he's got stock ability. He's got rebounding ability. Like the race don't really do him justice when Burns is off the floor. So, um, yeah, man. I, I, I think he's gonna be popular too, based on what he's done in two of the last three games. And really, I only need a twenty out of him. So I'm much more interested in getting uh, getting up to Dr. Going down to Middlebrooks. Which means if Burns is unowned, like you can take your twenty-eight. I don't know if that's enough to win a tournament from him. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I'm. I think I'm just sliding with that. But I'm with you on DJ Horn. Like I, I, I mean, for cash, like you just have to play DJ Horn. It just we, to make too much sense. Yeah. We stack Middlebrooks with one of those guys, DR or Horn, or is this a one-off? Oh yeah, definitely. With I stack with Horn. Um, just because DR and Middlebrooks can eat from each other, mm -hmm. but they don't. You know, he doesn't start. So I mean, maybe DR cleans up first and then. The problem is Burns shoots all, a ton. I mean, thirty percent usage rate almost. So, I don't think I put those two together. But I'm, I'm comfortable putting Horn with any of the forwards, really. Gotcha. Good stuff. Excellent. As always, a couple of games left here. Three games to be precise in this rundown. Thanks for hanging out with us here. We are definitely. We are now officially one and done after dark on the East it's Coast. It's after midnight. If you're watching, like it's late. That's right. Thanks for hanging out with us there. Watching that, like I said, Wisconsin just took that L. Utah State up 62-53 to 53 on TCU right now. As we talk about Texas and Tennessee, the Rick Barnes Bowl here, 145-point um, implied total. Um, both of these teams play good defense. I'm, this, this total is iffy for me. I don't know if we're going to get to 145. But either way, both of these teams playing some defense. Texas playing eight guys, really. Um, but there's only a handful of, of gents worth worth mentioning here. A. Smith, obviously, DeSue, guys that have done it in this tournament before, Mike. Uh, what about those two? Uh, yeah, I mean, really the only two that I have interest in, Max A. Smith, 7,300. Like, we know he has 35 to 40 upside. The problem is it's Tennessee's defense, yeah. which is uh, which is pretty, pretty dang good. But it is March. Um, none of these guys played very well, obviously, against Colorado State. Uh, you got to think they shoot better, which means that, uh, you know, Ace Smith still has that, you know, somewhat of a ceiling here. Uh, Dylan DeSue, though, at 6,700, like I'm always going to play him in tournaments. That's just too cheap. I mean, he has 40 fantasy point upside. Every time he takes the court, it really doesn't matter about matchup. I mean, hell, he played in the SEC. 
Um, yeah. So, you know, Tennessee can sometimes become a little offensive minded. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see. This is like a game that could go, I feel like it could go way over and go absolutely into the 130s. <laughs> like it's just one of those. The range of outcomes. Of, yeah, range wild. outcomes is nuts, right? So, yeah, I'm absolutely smashing Dylan the two uh, a lot in tournaments because that, I'm, anytime you find guys that are 8K type players and you find them at this price point, like Caleb Love when he's 7,600, it's like, okay, he's a 9K player. Like, I don't know why you just wouldn't jam him in if he's if people aren't going to play him. And people have been burned by him over the past three games. But we've also made a ton of money off him when he's hitting 40 and 42s. So mm-hmm. absolutely in play. But that's about it for me, Eric. Is there anybody else sticking out for you? Yeah, you know, I don't know if I would say that uh, that Tyrese Hunter is, a, is an 8K player, right? I think he'd have to be a little bit more consistent for that. But, I mean, he's got he's – got, ceiling that's pretty close to it right like he's out on the floor 35 plus minutes and in, in this one would be my expectation you know he can he can reach back and get you 45 48 three games ago right so you know based on the recent performance he's probably going to be a bit overlooked he did get a nice little got a nice little lineup got that uh got that got that trim job 6.4k down from seven so you know don't don't mind buying the dip here you know, because of the upside, because of the fact that he's going to be overlooked, like he he's in the mix in, in tournaments, but it's been a wild ride all year with Hunter, so I don't expect that to change as soon as tomorrow. It's been a wild ride with a lot of these Longhorn players, as we've witnessed firsthand here on the I-35 corridor right here. You even have the Rodney Terry, as Mike likes to call it, the Rodney Terry edition uh, Yeti Cup there. I, will, I refuse to actually. It is not, and it would never will. It never would be either. Um, maybe win a couple. If he goes to back to back elite eights, I mean, maybe we can have a conversation. Win a couple I might, games. He just took you I'm, to an elite eight. <laughs> I might even lay off of him at that point, but I I doubt it. Uh, you know who didn't lay off the live chat is Gentry, who let us know he's still watching, keeping us going. We appreciate that, man. Thanks for letting God us know you're still lab. hanging out and watching with us. Make sure you hang out, or make sure if you're up with us still and you're hanging out, let us know in the live chat if you're hanging out like Wits does. In the AM with your coffee, eating your bagel or your donut or your kolache or Saturday. whatever it is, you know, maybe go before you go to Home Depot. Make sure you drop us a comment there as well and hit all those buttons for us. As we move to Tennessee, we know Texas gives up the three ball, Mike. This is just who's going to make the threes. We know we love Dalton Connect just in general. The price is a little bit farther down from what did he peak at? Like he peaked at over 10K, didn't he? No, I think he got up to nine. I think nine, 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 okay. nine thousand flat. Yeah. Well, either way, I, I, I like this better than I like nine K, especially with <laughs> yeah. somebody that shoots two hundred seven threes uh, across the season. What about the old volunteers, Mike? Yeah, I mean, he should have been ten K. We were like, why is he not ten K when he's putting up fifties and sixties? So, yeah, I mean, there's nothing not to like. I didn't like him the other day because the I mean, knew it was going to be a absolute mud stomping of St. Peter's, and he still put up thirty six. But that's, I mean. Yeah, that's not a, that. That wasn't good for a slate that people put up seven and eight eggs. So, uh, massive shot rate, like can rebound, can hand out a few dimes. Uh, plays good, you know, plays solid defense. Shoots forty percent from three. He's going to take a ton of shots on this one. I know Texas defense, uh, like they have, you know, Dylan Mitchell on the wing. Um, they have an annoying Brock Cunningham. So, like they've got like pieces to throw at him. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like play him heavily, but I'm not going to ignore him at all. Like that would be. Uh, <laughs> That would be really dumb. Uh, as a guy Ziegler, seventy nine hundred, kind kind of interesting, but he gets the Tyrese Hunter assignment, and we saw the Hunter really lock down uh, Isaiah Stevens. Uh, he's pretty good. Um, that's what Tyrese Hunter's been known for is his defense. So, like Ziegler at seventy nine hundred, like these guys are in play. I don't know. Like I would rather just play Connect. Um, maybe some eighty at seven K. Uh, that's the lowest this price has been in quite some time. Um, he hasn't done much. He's kind of a cat. Like if you're playing double ups, I feel like AD's a pretty solid play um, at 7K. But yeah, I don't know, man. Like overall, the pricing on this side is just really tough to get to. I'm not playing Vescovy. I'm not playing any of the bench bench pieces like Ganey. I never play Triple J. Eric is uh, like every now and then he'll go off, man. What uh, what are your thoughts about him? Josiah Jordan James. Uh, I think you kind of covered it with how you've sort of laid out this side in general. Um, you know, for me, this kind of feels like a lot of what I had to say about Tyrese Hunter with a guy that doesn't shoot nearly as much, right? So, like, 
you know, it's 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 hard to find a point where he's he's really paying off six point five K, you know, where where he does, it's just it's completely random, right? Like I'm not I'm not really going out of my way to to roster him. There there are better options in the six K range. There are better options in the six K range on the other side of this game, even. So yeah, I mean you're you're getting real cute if you're if you're clicking the name uh, clicking the button on Triple J. If it was double J, if it was J E double F J A double R E double T, former mm-hmm. Intercontinental Champion Jeff Jarrett, you might push that button. But Triple you J, might. Josiah Jordan James, I don't know if you can get there at six point five K. Thanks for hanging out with us. Even Snake Eyes, you said they're fighting to sleep. Getting those Z's as you grind out tonight's cash games. Well, thanks for hanging out late with us. Snake's Eyes has been in the live chat quite often here over the past couple of weeks, and we always appreciate that for sure. Let us know if you're hanging out with us. Drop it in the live chat. We'll flash it up on the screen. Two more games here in this one, and we'll get you out of here with uh, two more games in a core four, of course. Duquesne and, and Illinois. Here's the uh, the largest spread, I believe, of the slate at 10. Uh, the old uh, Dukes are 10-point dogs against the Illini. Big-time pace up for Duquesne. Eight guys playing, you know, checking in. Uh, but the, what we're really wanting to focus on here are those backcourt guys, Mike, because they're the ones playing the big minutes. Yeah, I mean, Illinois was destroyed by the three ball during Big Ten play. Uh, they also gave up 11 threes and 37% shooting. Uh, the Moorhead, we've talked about it. Illinois is trying to win offensively. Like, they don't. Like, if you score, that's fine. We're just going to, you know, run it down your throat on the other side. So, uh, Jimmy Clark, 7,700 in play, I think, for tournaments. Has 40 fantasy point ceiling in this one. We saw Lathan uh, go for 40 from Moorhead. We saw Minix have actually a decent game, uh, 4X at 8,400, which I didn't think he was going to do. Um, we saw Thelwell have a good game. So, it's like all the guards are definitely in play. I know Minix is a forward, but they list him as guard. Uh, but just, I, sp- you know, spun the wheel on the guards from Moorhead. And uh, two of them, two of them, uh, you know, one of them played well, and, yeah, and one of them was, you know, better than better than normal. So, uh, Jimmy Clark definitely in play. Uh, much rather go to Day Day Grant at seventy two hundred. Uh, this guy just chucks a ton of threes. Um, just plays a pile of minutes. Like I know they've just been okay over the last few games. Um, we saw them in a pace up against BYU, and they kind of dragged the tempo down. So these are secondary plays only. It's not like I'm like racing to go uh, go get these guys at all. Um, but I think they are different. I I think they go overlooked because most people think Illinois is just going to hammer these guys. So um, you know, not a not a ton of like interest in cash games. I would much rather use these guys in GPPs. Uh, Nikas here at our net chest, whatever you however you say his name, he's 3900. Jay, I know you had him, yeah. you know, that 28 point wave that was kind of crazy. You know, a lot of bad with the drama being in, uh, you know, it's a foul trouble, but uh, you know, he's played well in the two previous games. Now, he basically doubled his output, uh, matched his total from the two previous games, and we thought he was on fire then. Now, the price is up $800, so basically, an entire 1x you got to go to. I mean. I don't really have much interest at, at 3,900 for this cat, but uh, you can go to him. I just, I don't want to chase because I, we haven't seen this from him really. And as he's straight shot rate, uh, we're really bumped up by, by drama being in, in foul trouble and trying to punch people in the face. So um, that's just boys I, and girls. No punch. Yeah. Just, I, I don't zone. know. Exactly. So that's about it for me. Any, uh, any thoughts on, on drama? It feels like he's kind of the, the last guy in the player pool for DK and Eric. He is the last guy in the player pool for for Duquesne. Five point four k, like you know, he he's he's played well enough when he's when he's not uh, when he's not in foul trouble. You know, the you know, looking through his game logs, he's he's got a little bit of upside, but not not a ton, right? You know, getting paced up. Uh, you know, Illinois gives up the three ball. He shoots well from three, forty five percent. He just doesn't take a ton of attempts, so maybe he shoots a few more. Um, you know the basically they're going to lean on him to to do the majority of the of the rebounding 31 percent rebound rate so he can pile up you know some ancillary stuff i just i don't know if he's got ceiling to to really be a, a tournament play right like maybe he backs into a double double that's how he gets there but i i think he's i think he's more of a more of a cash guy but i, I mean even with that you're worried about him swinging on someone and getting into some foul trouble and your cash day is over you know 
let's not let's just uh, let's put the let's put the, uh, the hands down. Okay, let's not do that. Just write it's it's in fact no, let's put it down. Like a Michael Jackson music. Love video. that. Love that video. You, you knew where I, you knew where I was going with that. You knew exactly where I was going with that. Illinois side, Mike the Illini, nine guys checking in, but it's it's just the big three for me, maybe a little bit more, <laughs> but uh big three are the ones playing the minutes. Yeah, and Duquesne, I mean, pretty solid defensively. You can ask BYU. Um, yeah, one thing Duquesne yeah. did, yeah, <laughs> for an offense that wanted to shoot threes, they didn't really get to shoot many threes. So that was just a, an ugly game. But uh, Duquesne will turn the ball over a ton. So stocks are available for an Illini team that doesn't force turnovers, which is going to give these guys a little bit more ceiling. I worry about this becoming, you know, you get these crowds and they become pro, uh, you know, the, the lower seed, right? Like you saw. It always turns. So if these games aren't out of hand, <laughs> you know, by the the 16 minute mark in the second half, like all of a sudden, man, it feels like you're playing an away game. So I feel like that's kind of the only way Duquesne can. No one's going to be able to stop Terrence Shannon. There, there aren't very many guys in the league that are in the NCAA that are going to be able to stop him across the country. So he's just on another planet. I mean, he's just going to give you 40. He's not 9700. I take some out of consideration just because of the matchup. Um, Duquesne was just going to try to take the air out of the ball, it feels like. I don't know why Duquesne would want to run up and down with these guys. They didn't really run up and down with BYU. They wanted to have this thing a slugfest. So I'm not, I'm not interested in Shannon. Um, Damascus at 8,500 had the triple-double. I'm not interested in him at 8,500. Like, these guys are just too expensive. Um, I know the totals, uh, you know, up here at the 150, but – I just, I'm maybe it's maybe it's watching that BYU game and just knowing that you know Duquesne's on this like you know prize fighter, this rocky like <laughs> you know they're just knocking. You can't knock them out, or if you do knock them out, they just get right back up, and it just becomes an annoying team to play. So, kind of taking a stance. Uh, I'm not paying these ceiling type prices for these Illinois guys. Um, secondary plays for me, Ty Rogers in the slugfest. I don't mind him just because he likes to get a lot of rebounds, offensive rebounds, putbacks. And out a few assists, but he needs to play minutes. So I just uh, like I'm okay if you want to play Shannon in, in cash because you know he's going to get at, he's going to score at least 25 real life points. Um, he just doesn't do a lot else, and you know Rogers the opposite. He doesn't shoot the ball and he <laughs> just did some rebounds and assists. So if you put those two guys together, like that would be the number one pick in the draft. But uh, that's about it for me, man. I had one Colvin Hawkins line with Eric, and it still didn't really work out for tournaments. What are your thoughts on Hawkins and the rest of these Illini? Yeah, if, if you've been banking on on Hawkins in tournaments lately, it hasn't been going great, right? Um, and because of that, like of of the Illini big three, he's always the the contrarian run, right? You know, like it, it feels like, especially lately, it's a little bit more of like a like a dynamic duo, and Hawkins is kind of that third wheel, right? So. You would think, you know, given his skill set, given given his rates, like at some point, you know, he's he's gonna go off for a lot of fantasy points. I don't know if this is necessarily that point, right? Like, if you want to make a case for it, you know, Hawkins Hawkins chips and Hawkins dips, three yes. percent block rate, three percent steal rate. Like, you know, maybe that stock boost kind of gets a gets a little bit of of some mojo going for him. But he's it, yeah, right? It's like just... he's the guy to look to for this stock boost. It's Hawkins on this team. So and and I get not wanting to pay for up for Shannon here. Um so to get into this game, it's I mean Hawkins looks like a clear if you were really just gonna force it, right man? Like I feel like Hawkins is that guy to get that boost. Yeah, he, he definitely benefits from the matchup in a more material way material way than most of the other guys we talked about here, right? But I mean, even if he even if he pokes one one or two more out, right? Like he's getting to twenty nine, you know. Like um, it's just it's it's hard to see a path where he's getting to the you know thirty six, thirty eight, forty that you're really looking for from a guy yeah. down to seven k. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I'm I was pulling this up real quick to see how many threes he's taken. Like this is what I'm talking like for Coleman Hawk and three point attempts. Three and five and seven. Okay, yeah, you like that over the last three. Like you can deal with averaging five three-point attempts, but before that, one, 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 six, five, seven. So Hawkins needs to get those threes up for me to be effective, uh, even to pay it off, like you were saying, even with the stocks. He's got to score some points. And the shot rate, 19% shot rate, 
They just want him to get some threes up there. Does somebody have to get into foul trouble? Does somebody have to, what what what's going to have to make it work for Coleman Hawkins? But again, like you hate to play the sooner or later game, but when's the last game. time? Yeah, it is, especially at seventy one hundred. I would much rather play the, that game at sixty one hundred, sixty three hundred with Hawkins. But you just feel like you got you want to be a part of it. You want to be there when it happens for Hawkins. Who knows? It could be the day. Thanks for hanging out late with us or early with us in the morning. What what time does this thing tip off on on Saturday morning? Like eleven forty seven, some weird time. We're gonna get that for you. Eleven forty five central, so twelve forty five east. Twelve forty five east or eleven forty five. I was close. I think I was close. A lot closer than I went over though. Price is right rules. I went over. So You're automatic done. loss. Uh, automatic lose. Be sure to get your uh, pet spayed and neutered to help control the pet population. Goodbye, everybody. No, one more game. Don't leave yet. Oregon and Creighton. Of course, uh, a nice 148-point implied total to wrap up the evening here with Mike's championship pick in the Creighton Blue Jays and my favorite freshman in all the land, Jackson Shelstead. I said I wanted this pick very, very badly, this game, I should say, to happen so we could see the Oregon guards against the Creighton guards. Oh, it's here. It's here. But are we playing any of them in fantasy, Mike, in daily fantasy? Uh, the Ducks running out eight guys. Starters playing big minutes, including my guy, Shellstad. Uh, but Dante's the guy here that is is putting up uh, all the fantasy points, at least in the front court. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, let's say he draws a tough matchup, but you look at what – I mean, Freeman was hitting threes, and he never – I mean, he had, like, he had a season high in threes, like, in the first five minutes in the drop coverage that Kalkbrenner plays. I mean, Dante, that's not going to happen. So, I feel – I still feel good saying that I don't really like the folly Dante <laughs> against Kalkbrenner. Um, I don't know that I like a lot, honestly. <laughs> uh, Lee Snard's price has exploded after that crazy game. Shellstad at 6,400, like, he's okay. Um, their applied totals and like it's not. I mean, plus you know, it's not great. So a little nervous, man. Um, JJ and Tracy, like I just can't do it at forty nine hundred. So I'm 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 pretty much off the Oregon side. Uh, Eric is. I mean, are you gonna chase fifty eight fantasy points in the slate breaker? Can I interest you in a little chase that cost you a thousand dollars more the than the last time he was out? <laughs> Um, I, I mean, Jermaine Cuisinart at AK is just like some bizarro world nonsense that my brain isn't ready to process. Right? Like, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't think you really need to to go here to you know try to try to get even close to that figure again. Um, I mean, to be fair to him, right? Like, he gets, you know, he gets, he, he could get max usage in this one. You know, I, I think right, I think Cuisinart's though, more of like rates. a yeah, I mean, look the the rates are the rates are fine, but the the team total is not exactly there. He's he's priced at a point where he's he's got to get to that ceiling again, and he doesn't really get there all that often. So expecting it to happen in in back to back situations, especially against this this Creighton team, it's just you're asking a lot, right? Like I don't I don't I wouldn't go as far to say that, like you completely cross him off, but like he is like. He is a he is a deep B side pull in your in your in your exposures for tomorrow's slate. Yeah, I mean Creighton they won't foul because they have to play their big four. So right. like they just you don't get you don't get uh and ones and like these like it's not like Arkansas where they just foul you like every every two minutes. Um there was a game tonight, I forget who it was. Oh, Florida. There was at like, one point there was like six straight possessions where the announcer was like, I don't know if they'd even gotten a, a They've taken six straight possessions where they've gone to the free throw line because Florida just keeps fouling. It's hacking so it, it hurts the fantasy points. So while they don't, you know, Creighton doesn't get steals and things like that. I mean, they're they're dead last in the country in opponent. Uh, turn, they only turn their opponent over eleven percent of the time. They want you to shoot the ball. They just they they're first in the country and free. They only allow sixteen percent free throw rate. They're number one in the country. Like you actually just are going to have to make shots. Uh, to beat Creighton, that's I mean that's just the way they're set up. They play that drop coverage with uh, Kalkbrenner going. They're just gonna go, uh, you know, they're gonna go under every. Or, excuse me, they're gonna essentially drop him into the paint. They're gonna take that away. They're gonna allow you to shoot threes. Like 
I mean, they're they're sixth in the country and three point attempts allowed. So you have yeah. to beat them by by hitting the three, and they're actually pretty good at shooting the three. <laughs> they're playing they're playing a lot better defense of late too, you know. And we know the deal with the Blue Jays, Mike. Big Four are playing basically the entire game. It's been the same Big Four all season. This is, and at these prices at the top, you can't stack these guys. You just got to flip a coin and pick one. We put up a poll. Uh, last show the last time Creighton was on the slate and basically Sharman, Cobran, and Alexander were just chop 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 everybody didn't know what to do it was like a third a third and a third and I think Alexander might have come out maybe with that 34 percent and it's probably because he was the cheapest out of yeah. all of them and he didn't he didn't pay it off so yep. um what are we doing with the Blue Jays here yeah I mean Sharman for cash just crazy rates all over the place He's going to get you 35. Um, he's got upside for tournaments for, you know, 40, 50, 60. Uh, Kalkbrenner at 9K. Um, I mean, not with Dante. I just cross both of those guys off. So I don't have too much interest in Ryan Kalkbrenner. Trey Alexander, now those prices starting to fall, of course. I mean, but he hasn't been great lately. I hope nobody plays him. Because when he does go off, it's for 40-plus fantasy points, which I could see him doing here. So Trey Alexander uh, obviously has some, some interest in him. Uh, I never get Ashworth right, uh, Eric. Like he's gonna have to make threes, man. That's been the tell of the story, and it's just so hard with these other three guys. I mean, they take all the shots and they have all the usage, and they <laughs> they have the ball in their hands a ton as well. So it's just kind of tough to play Stephen Ashworth. Any thoughts on him? You never get Stephen Ashworth right. Uh, I never get Stephen Ashworth right. I just I don't I don't think there is a way to get him right. Right, like maybe. Maybe he, you know, takes the the goalkeeper path and is just, you know, getting getting these kick out threes and you know makes them, you know, makes them all and that's how he gets there. But you know, even on, even on his best day, like he's really reaching to get five x at this at this six point six k price tag, right? So like, I just I think you're you're getting a little too cute, kind of kind of trying to chase that that ceiling that may not really come. And if it does come, like it's not going to be, you know, a, a, a slate breaking type of performance. So Ashworth isn't someone that I'm, I'm making a priority by any means. It makes sense. But, you know, we all know at least one of these guys is going off. Like, I don't I don't care the total. I don't care the matchup. I don't care. One of them's one of them's going five X. Who's it going to be? Shire. Spin that wheel. Oh, there it is. Hey, hey Shireman. You landed Shireman. Okay, sounds like it's Shireman. That's what our guy Eric the Blue likes to say. Man, we made it. We made it through this eight game where we broke down every single game for the Broskies and Broskets. As the live chat is still on fire, as evidenced by Nate C. Hustle, the man, the myth, the legend, right there. Heating it up. Heating it up, dropping the fire emoji. And then our guy Nate hanging out with us. Hey, good stuff. my dude. Somebody. Yeah, we know you, Nate. We know you. We know you from around the block. Definitely good to see you here hanging out in the one and done live chat. Coming from someone who doesn't know much about the tourney. It's good stuff. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for the kind words, man. We really appreciate you hanging out with us, especially this late. Are you watching Utah State finish this thing off against TCU, Nate? I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. We really appreciate all that. Up to 852 subs now, ladies and gents. Yeah, let's hey, go. Yo. Picked up a few during the show. Thanks for doing your part in the Green Screens Media Universe and pushing those buttons. We've broken down all eight games. Would it be one and done without a core four and more? No, it would not. Oh, no. And we're getting it to you. Not just... One core four. No, no. Two core fours, starting with the cash game core four. And we're going to start with our guy, Mike. Let's see if he can leave us more than 5,100 per player. <laughs> what do you got for the cash game core four, man? Yeah, man. As uh, Grand Canyon, uh, the whole digits in the second half against St. Mary's is pretty awesome. Yo. We'll see if that uh, ends up holding on. Uh, ben Middlebrooks. So I'll start with him. North Carolina State. He's 4,200. Too cheap for his role. Uh, <laughs> like he doesn't even need. He's got two thirty pieces in two of the last three games. He doesn't even need that. Like he feels like he's a lock for seventeen fantasy points, which is <laughs> what you want in cash uh, lineups here. But you can play him in both. I just you feel pretty comfortable, um, even if he only plays eighteen minutes. Like that's just 
that's just him getting it done. His rates have come up tremendously. Uh, DJ Horn following that up in North Carolina State, uh, obviously getting the Oakland matchup. Uh, 7,100, just, you know, a guy that's probably be 500 to 1,000 more uh, based on, you know, uh, you know what he can do for as far as upside, which means his floor is pretty high here um, because he does the ball, just hands a ton, takes a ton of shots. Tyson Walker, 7,800, you know, not, not, not the greatest game environment, but you have to believe that uh, uh, he is going to take a ton of shots in this one. Them trying to pull the upset. It's Izzo and March, so love uh, Tyson Walker here. Rarely goes under 25 fantasy points. So you just kind of get your 30 to 32 and move on. Baylor Shireman, we just talked about it. He just gets his 35 or more. Um, so you want to slot that in for your for cash type settings. Uh, that's going to leave you 5.4K, which, you know, isn't my worst, but it isn't my best. And as Jay likes to say, these are pillars of, uh, of cash yes. lineup. So you don't have to use, you know, if you wanted to use, uh, you know, a mid eight guy um, other than Shireman, or you want to use, uh, you know, mid six guy other than Tyson Walker. I could absolutely see that, but I think these North Carolina State guys have to be in your cash lineups. Like the, the matchup's too juicy, um, and they've just been on fire. Eric, do us the honors and give us the old tourney core. Four. I'm I'm a little worried here because I I feel like we've given a, a peek behind the curtain in that if if you spin the wheel and it comes up with in this case Baylor Shireman. Baylor Sharman immediately gets inserted <laughs> into the cash core four. So we uh, we do have a slightly more sophisticated process than that, but just slightly. Anyways, moving on to our tournament core four. Uh, Going to go with the cheapest way to get into that Oakland side. That's Rocket Watts 3.7K, a guy that can routinely get you into the high teens, even in the low 20s. You love that at that price tag. Uh, Johnny Furphy, we talked about. Uh, earlier i i do like the way that this game sets up for the kansas guards so him sitting at 6.6k coming off of a fantastic game last time out and just smashes in these game settings where he is in dickinson is in and uh we're looking at the shorthanded kansas side dylan desu sitting at 6.7k we were saying last time out when he was 7k that we are always going to click that button when he's priced this way in tournaments, and now he's $300 cheaper. Yes, you have to worry about the tough Tennessee defense, but Desu is a guy that has navigated those waters before and has come up on the right side of it plenty of times over. And then finally, Mo Diara. We talked about it a little bit more, 7.2K. That is because robots are setting the pricing. Anybody that has eyes would probably put that <laughs> price tag north of 8K. So I will happily take the implied $800 value and click the button there. And because I'm a man of the people, 6.5 K per player. Hey, so hey, put, go put out Netches there and do there. a lot of damage with that. Put Netches in there now. See what that gets us. He's at 3.9. Who's going in? Netches. N-E-C-A-S. Uh, from DK. Your favorite. Where does that leave us? The cool 7.3 left. <laughs> My guys. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Hey, just your whole bankroll in play right now. What could go wrong? It's March. If you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen. We're baking this bread, baby. You already know that. Thanks for hanging out with us. Another long show, long-ish show, but you know we were going to bring you – we were going to bring it heavy, hot and heavy to you for this. We knew we are coming in. We, this is what, like – Nine shows in the last six days, I feel like, one of the times been bringing the heat <laughs> At least. over all the platforms, whether it's Mike hitting up uh, Spaces on Twitter, and we've got our guy Napesy Hustle in here, and Mike and I have gone, and then Mike and Eric go, and then all three of us are in the booth. You know, it's just... <laughs> when do they we sleep? Do. We don't. We don't. We're out here on the grind, and we appreciate y'all for grinding with us gentry we see you thanks for hopping in there one more time we definitely appreciate you hopping in there along with our guy nape c hustle snakes eyes gentry hanging out with us on twitter josh myron chad nate hopping in there late we appreciate that for sure we appreciate all of y'all for hanging out with us and doing your part in the green screens media universe make sure you hit twitter at one and done cbb it's all spelled out one and done cbb on twitter also at Get Green Screens for the Green Screens Media thing or the Green Screens Media page on Twitter and at Get Green Screens on TikTok as well. My name is Jay Heinrich. 
I'm the conductor of this green screens media train. Find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. El Capitan himself, the OG Money Mike. Find him on X at MC Holland 34. Eric, the blue, at Fantasy Nav in those Twitter streets. I do the train. Mike does the ship. Eric drives the bread truck. Nape does it all. We appreciate you for hanging out with us. Hit those buttons. Get this bread, baby. Go out there, win some money, share your green screens with us. It's time. Let us know. It's time to get this bread. Now let's go do it, baby. Take care of yourselves. Tell somebody you love them. Let's go get it. Peace. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.